Welcome back to my channel, The Liminal Season. I'm Anna. It's so good to be here today. I am rocking some natural lighting. We'll see how hopefully it stays okay. Today I want to actually do a, something a little bit different, something I haven't done before. So I wanted to start off today with Larry Reed's beginning of the year book tag. I just watched her video and I really enjoyed it. I really liked the questions and I've always wanted to do a book tag before. Last year I got I got tagged in some book in some tags and I never got around to it. It was just a, a, a bad time for me. So now I decided I wanted to do it and it was a great time to do it because the day that this is published, I didn't have anything concrete planned for that day. And I figured might as well do it now and not put it off, especially since it's already the middle of February. If I put it off too long, it won't be the beginning of the year anymore. So for the first question, how many books are you planning on reading? This year I have a Goodreads goal of 60 books. Last year it was 80 and I got to like 56. Instead of overshooting, I'd rather undershoot. And I felt like 60, I was like, okay, I almost got to 60. This year I'm gonna get to 60. I probably will because at least last month and this month, I am on like a reading spree. I am loving the books that I'm reading. I'm loving reading. I have picked up more audiobooks, which has really helped me because I am busy during the day, especially right now, this month. I don't have like the mind power or the, or the time to just sit and read a physical book or even my Kindle book my Kindle. I do it at night, but audiobooks have really helped me. I, I can do things. I can go on a walk. I can work and still have my books read. Like I can still be listening to books and reading books. So 60, but I'm expecting to do more. I'm hoping. So the next question is my most anticipated release of the year. Unfortunately, I am not someone who really pays attention to when books are released other than from social media, any hype that's happening, but I've never been someone who's been organized enough to keep track of all the books that are coming out. The one book that I know is coming up is by an author that I'm actually, I really, really love, but her last book didn't hit home like her first two books for me. She's not my all-time favorite author, but I do really enjoy her mysteries. And the book I'm talking about, well, I guess the author I'm talking about is Simone St. James. And the book that I'm talking about, it's still loading. And the book that I'm talking about is Murder Road by Simone St. James. I think this book will determine whether she's the author for me, but I really liked Broken Girls and I really liked The Sundown Motel. I did not like the book of Cold Cases as much. I think I was expecting more paranormal than was given to me and I was really disappointed. So anyway, I'm really excited about that one. I'm hoping that it's going to be good. The third question is a book you have on your physical TBR that probably won't be read. I had a hard time with this at first because I looked at all my books and I was like, well, even if there's not a book that I'm excited to read, I still want to read it. Like there's a lot of books that kind of scare me or they're like, oh, that doesn't sound good right now but I do want to read it. I have like this thing where I'm like, if it's on my shelf, I want to read it eventually. However, I have one book that I found that I was like, when I got it, 
It was actually in a subscription box. It was in the literary, uh, literary book club box. And it was a Scottish folk and fairy tales, a collector's edition. It's very pretty. It's cute. But I just am not someone who really picks up fairy tales and devours them or reads them at all. Like, uh, this was not my first choice of, like, getting of a book gift in a subscription box. I don't know. And I, I'm like, I do have Scottish ties, but not, like, strong Scottish ties either. I think it would be interesting if I was... Maybe if I ever created a, like, wrote a book that had mythological creatures or, like, based on a fairy tale. But I just, I just don't know if I see myself reading these. I, I don't know if I'm ever going to read this one. So, that's, the, that's what this is. This is the book. Which is so funny because I'm like, I'm sure there's other people who love fairy tales and I'm just like, I just don't know if I, that's like not my kind of vibe right now. I'll, maybe one day it will be. The fourth question, a new genre you'd like to read more of. There's a lot of genres that are not typical for me to read. They're not necessarily new. Like I would love to get into more fantasy books, hard fantasies, like, like Lord of the Rings and type fantasy or or even more romanticy. I know that's really popular, but I've read I've read those before. It's not like they're anything new. But there is one genre that is is new to me and I've been interested in for a while. I just haven't picked up the books quite yet for them, and that's gothic horror gothic anything really. I would love to actually read more horror books in general, but like gothic horror really just like speaks to me right now. The fifth question kind of attached to that last question is what book made you want to try this genre? And that was actually Mexican Gothic by Silvia Morena Garcia and I loved this book. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but I just loved the gothic gothicness how it's based on Jane Eyre it's not like super super horror filled but there's like horror elements and like creepy creepy things like the whole vibe in this book is really creepy but it's really like intriguing and when I read this I just I just ate it up and so this is why I want to go into more like gothic books or gothic horror books gotta gotta take a break Sixth question, a book you're most likely to reread. I have like mixed feelings about rereading, but there are, there are several that come to mind. And one of them, the, the main one that I do definitely want to reread is Little Woman by Louisa May Alcott. Isn't this beautiful? This came in that same subscription as that fairy tale the literary book club book box or something like that. I just, I read this last year, last May or June, and I loved it. I loved it. It was so cozy and sad and mostly cozy. And I was really scared because it's, it's a really, really big book. I definitely, once I finished it, I was like, I'm going to reread this. I want to reread this again. I already know. I haven't reread it yet, but I feel like it's going to be something that I do, I don't know, maybe at Christmas time because it starts off in the Christmas season and there's a lot of Christmas scenes and it's just cozy and that's kind of when you want to have a cozy book. So for the seventh question, a book you wanted to get to in 2000 and 23 but didn't so it's a priority in 2024 and I don't know if this counts really because I've already read part of it but I'm gonna put it on anyway it's Legendborn by Tracy Dion I started this in December um, of last year so just a couple of months ago 
and I got really, really into it. I am halfway through. I had to return the audiobook. It was just something that I've been meaning to read for a while because I've heard a lot of people really like this series. Once I started reading it, I was really enjoying it and I've been meaning to pick it up again and it is priority. I am going to read it. I think it'll be officially on my March TBR, I'm hoping, because by that time I'm hoping that I'll be a little bit further along. Maybe I'll get the book and if not, maybe I'll just read it. So yeah, maybe I cheated a little bit with this one, but that's okay. <coughs> I'm dying. <laughs> I'm like crying. Sorry. Just got something in my throat. Question number eight, a series you want to read this year. There's a couple of series that I'm going to mention. The first one I'm kind of nervous about, but I've heard so many good things. People are obsessing over it. Okay. Although I am, I'm not a cowboy romance girly. Maybe I could be. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I am talking about the series Ch Chestnut Springs by Elsie Silver, um, beginning with Flawless. I feel like I've heard so much about Elsie Silver, this series, as well as the other series. I, I honestly don't know which. I think you can start off with Chestnut Springs and that'll be okay. And that's what most people do. All of her series I've heard so many people gushing about recently and now I'm like, Okay, I have to I have to at least see what the hype is about, right? I have no real expectations because I'm not like again, I'm not a cowboy romance girly, though I'm not saying I'm couldn't be one. The the second series I'm really interested in, mostly because of the hype recently, is the Magnolia Parks universe. I've heard a lot of hype on this one. I've heard some people love it, like absolutely love it, and then also some people hate it so much. And again, I kind of want to see what pe why people are, are loving it, why they're hating it. I'm very intrigued. Some people are like crying about it. I, I just want to be involved. I want to know. There are some, some series that I'm like, I don't even want to touch that right now because there's so much hype. But these two, for some reason, I'm just like drawn to wanting to know more about them. Question number nine is an author you've never read before but wanted to try this year. I have two of her books, uh, a series, and I've heard really good things about this series. R.F. Kuang. So I guess this is another series I like, but just like anything from R.F. Kuang, I've heard she is such a, like her books are phenomenal and really good and people love it. And I kind of want to, again, I want to see like for myself, I want to see like, is this an author that I'm also going to love? Question number 10 is an author you're probably not going to read more of this year. This is something that's also really hard for me. I will do, I will, <clears throat> I will put my one DNF, well, I guess I have two DNFs, but my one DNF that I have on Goodreads, but the one most recent DNF, this is, this is also like a lot of people's favorites for, for those who love high fantasy, but I tried to read this, The Grace of Kings by Ken Liu, and I did not have a good time. I got pretty far into it, but nothing, nothing spoke to me. Not the characters, not the plot, nothing. And at the, by the time I got to, towards the end, I was like, why am I even reading this when I don't even care about anything? And it was just like, it was, it, there was a lot of politics and fighting and I just didn't want to be involved with that book anymore. And so with that being said, I just feel like 
I probably won't read anything else by this author just because I I don't know if they're the right author for me. <sighs> anyway, question number 11. A popular book you want to read. This has gotten so much praise recently and it was in I think multiple people's best books of 2023. I've been really really wanting to read this. Not only is it just beautiful, it's just kind of right up my alley. I love I love I love soft fantasy or or even magical realism. I am really looking forward to this. Question number 12. An, a non-popular book you want to read. The Connollys of County Down by Tracy Lane. I haven't heard anyone talk about this book, really. At least not recently. And I really loved her first book, We Are the Brennans. It was just... For me, it was really, really good. It was really fun. It was captivating. And as soon as I saw she was coming out with another book and it looked like this, like, look how beautiful that is. I knew that I wanted to pick it up and I've been, I don't even know what it's about. I just feel like if I loved that first book of hers, I'm going to like this one. Question number 13, an audiobook you want to listen to. So this one was really hard because I listen to a lot of audiobooks, but there's not like an audiobook specific, like a, a book that's specifically an audiobook that I want to read, if that makes sense. There's not like, I will listen to an audiobook of a book that I want to read if it's available and if the narrator doesn't make me cringe. But, so it was really hard for me to come up with like, is there an audiobook that I really want to read? Like a specifically of a book, the audiobook, not just the book itself, just the audiobook. I finally came up with one today. I really want to listen. I really, really, really want to listen to the audiobook version of Lord of the Rings. I've read it. It was very hard to get through certain parts and I want to reread it to see if like, I am a different reader now, maybe I'll like it more, but I really want to listen to it with Andy, I think it's Andy Serkis, his, his, the, when he does the narration, because he did Smeagol and he's very invested in Lord of the Rings and I feel like if anyone can narrate the Lord of the Rings and bring it to life, he's going to be able to. For question number 14, uh, book you want to read based on the cover I have four I have four okay the the immediate one that I've I chose immediately was something that I just got in the mail and if you watched my last video the haul video you'll recognize it it is salt kiss by Sierra Simone I just think this is beautiful. Like I am obsessed with this for some reason. I just love it so much. I don't even know much about it at all, if I'll even like it, but I just can't get enough. Even, even this part is beautiful. Like I just, I just want to read it because it's so beautiful and I'm so glad that I have it on my shelves. And then another one, again, I don't know much about it but this is the reverse jacket of a crown of ivy and glass and I just think that this is so cute and beautiful and just look at that too like that is beautiful oh question 15 a book to tv adaptation you're excited excited for I am excited to pick up I don't know if I'll love anything else by this author, but I am actually, I, I already watched season one of this like a few years ago when it first came out, but Fire, Firefly Lane by Christian Hanna. I really liked the first season. I haven't watched the second season, but I really liked the first season of this and I didn't even know that it was a 
based off of the book. So now that I've already read something from Christian Hanna and really enjoyed it, I really want to pick this up. Question number 16. Something bookish you want to start doing this year. I, I mean, obviously I started my booktube again this year, but looking forward in the future, I am actually really looking forward to starting a reading journal because I've never had one before. Sorry, the lighting just changed. It got really bright. I've been kind of hesitant because I feel like there's a part of me that's like, do I really need to start a reading journal? Do I want to start a re reading journal? But then I look at other people's writing journals and I think, oh, that's so fun. I've already bought it, but I have my little reading journal here and I'm really excited to start. I've already kind of started filling it out, but like I'm excited as I read books to fill it in. It has like everything, like yearly goals, monthly reading goals. It just like has everything that you would ever want to, it even has like some challenges. Question number 17, something bookish you want to stop doing this year. This one was hard for me and I just came up with it like right before I started filming because I was like, there's a lot of things that I want to start doing because I don't feel like I'm doing enough bookish content and bookish things. But one of the things that I want to stop doing is buying books purely based off of hype or even based off of like cover. I want to actually buy books that I'm interested in or even buy books that I'm, I loved and I want on my shelves and I want to possibly reread. I want to be more intentional with the books that I buy, not just like, oh, it's a book and I sort of know what it is or it has a pretty cover or, sorry, again, <laughs> the sun went away. <laughs> so more intentional, more intentional with my book hauls. Question number 18, a 2024 bookish goal. My, my bookish goal for this year is to do more experiential reading. I kind of talked about it last year and I had so much fun with it that I want to start picking it up again and really enjoying my book. It's kind of the being more intentional with my reading, but basically finding something within the book that I'm reading that I can also recreate and do myself. And sorry, again, the sun keeps going back and forth. So it's really just like light, dark, light, dark. Question 19, a 2024 booktube goal. I want to be consistently filming, editing, and uploading new content, hopefully every, every week. Uh, I want to be consistent with it because last year I really fell off the, the wagon and I really regret it because this has, this is a, like a really creative outlet for me. I love, I love producing these videos and being creative with it and finding new things that I'm actually excited about doing. And along with that, I want to get to, I know this is tiny, tiny, I'm an itty bitty channel, but like. My goal is to get to 100 subscribers. Subscribe down below if you want to help me with that goal. But that is kind of my main two goals for uh, booktube this year. For question 20, a 2024 non-bookish goal. I am expecting in May. So my first goal is to have a baby and take care of the baby, obviously. There goes the light again. And I'm really excited, but really nervous about it. One of my fears of becoming a mom is to kind of lose myself a little bit. And I don't want to lose myself. And so one of the th things on top of becoming a new time mom, a first time mom, is to figure out what I want in my future. Specifically, if there's a job I want or a specific path that I want to take or specific passions that I want to pursue. 
the question 23, 21 is to describe how you want 2024 to go in one word. So originally I, when I was thinking about all these questions <clears throat> last night, I thought of transformational, but after filming this, I scratched that out and I want to say intentional. I want this year to be intentional. I want to, I want everything I do to be intentional. Question 22, booktube creators who inspire you. Okay, I never made a list and I should have, but I'm going to go on YouTube now. Okay, some of the uh, booktube tubers that I'm inspired by are Chelsea Zhao at The Lit Review at Books and Lala, Tatiana, Vandy's Books. Oh, I'm kind of new to me. Kay's Library. And then the last question is something you want to say to anyone starting a book, book account. I feel like I don't I won't have the best advice mostly because I am literally itty bitty. I just started again. But one of the things that I would say is if you want to do it, just do it and just start with whatever you can do. Like right now I'm only doing it with my phone. I don't have any real fancy equipment. Be consistent and don't, don't get discouraged with how slow things start. And because I, I say that because I sometimes get discouraged and I think last year that really, I, I really took it to heart. But this year I kind of went in thinking, I love doing these videos. I want to do them for myself because I, it's a creative outlet. I want to be involved in the booktube community. Doesn't matter how many followers I have, not really. Or how many views I get. Not really. If I if I stay on 35 subscribers for the rest of my life, that's fine. Like, I'm still so honored that 35 people are willing to be here with me and to follow my progress and to watch and listen to me and be my friends. And those are all of the questions. I just, I, can't, I had like the coughing fit. I've had to take many, many drinks. But it was really fun, um, kind of chaotic, but that's usually how things are. Uh, thank you so much for, uh, if you've listened this far, uh, please like and subscribe down below. Comment down below a bookish goal you have for this year. I will see you next week on Tuesday in my next video. Love you. Goodbye.